So, welcome to all of you uh, once again on the course on blockchain where we are discussing the basic architecture of blockchain and uh, its usefulness. So, in the last lectures uh, we have discussed about the fundamentals of blockchain and uh, how this uh, blockchain technology can be applied in wild uh, for different kind of application ranging from financial applications as well as different types of uh, applications like smart contracts or for different types of business platforms. So, with that background, um, now we will start a discussion of uh, in depth uh, analysis of the blockchain technology, its design principle and uh, how we can use blockchain for uh, different type of application starting from the details of the Bitcoin technology. So, initially we will look into the basic primitives which works as the building block uh, behind the development of uh, blockchain technology and the Bitcoin architecture and then from there gradually we will look into the, into the various uh, things inside uh, the broad concepts of Bitcoin architecture and uh, how Bitcoin uh, is uh, developed as an useful technology uh, uh, for uh, money transfer or the digital currency transfer over a broad network. So, uh, let us start with uh, the basic things uh, behind the development of uh, behind the development of uh, cryptographical aspects of uh, blockchain. So, we will discuss uh, broadly about uh, the basic crypto primitives in uh, next uh, couple of lectures. Uh, initially, we will look into the details of hash function and from there we will go to the details of uh, digital signatures. So, uh, in this uh, set of lectures, we will look into the uh, broadly two concepts. One is uh, cryptographically secured hash function and the second concept of digital signatures which uh, work as the fundamental building block behind the blockchain technology. So, this hash function uh, they are used to connect uh, different blocks one after another that uh, we had seen earlier uh, during the basic discussion they, that individual blocks of a blockchain they are connected to it each other through some hash function and then uh, we will look into the concept of digital signature where uh, this digital signature is used uh, for making the blockchain uh, uh, blockchain uh, tamper proof and uh, resilient against non repudiation kind of attack where uh, once a party makes a transaction he or she will not be able to deny that the transaction has not uh, been made or uh, he or she has not made that transaction. So, uh, let us start with this concept of cryptographic hash function. Uh, in the last lecture, uh, we have seen a brief details of the cryptographic hash function. So, a cryptographic hash function it takes uh, uh, an input uh, which is the message and it produces an output HM which we call as the message digest. Now, in case of black blockchain, uh, this message digest is a fixed size output and we generally use 256 of bits of outputs uh, in blockchain. So, the property of this kind of cryptographic hash function is that uh, this kind of hash functions are efficiently computable function and you do not need to uh, use a significant amount of resource just to see just to be sure that um, the message digest of a uh, function of a message m corresponds to h m where the algorithm corresponds to uh, the hash is known. So, uh, from this point uh, the three important properties of a cryptographic hash functions are as follows. First the hash function need to be collision free. So, uh, called by collision free means that if two messages are different then their digest will also differ. That means that if you have two messages m1 and m2 and uh, if you know that m1 is not equal to m2 then their digest h of m1 will also not match with h of m2. So, that is the basic uh, uh, fundamental concept behind this collision free property of a cryptographic hash function. The second important property for a hash function is hiding. 
So, this kind of hash function it hide the original message behind the message digest. So, whenever you are transferring HM from HM it is very difficult to guess what is the inherent message M. By given a M you can efficiently compute HM, but given HM there is no efficient algorithm exist which can compute M. So, that way uh, we call this kind of hash function as the one, one way function that given an M uh, given a message you can efficiently compute the corresponding digest, but given a digest there does not exist any efficient algorithm which can compute uh, the uh, original message or the M. So, that is the property of uh, message hiding and the third interesting property which is used in the blockchain design and which is another interesting property behind the development of uh, cryptographic hash function it is called the puzzle friendly property. So, the puzzle friendly property says that given two messages x and y uh, you need to find out a value k such that y will be equal to hash of x appended k. So, this means that you need to find out the value of k where x is given and y is given and the algorithm for the hash is also given. So, for this kind of methodology or for this kind of puzzle there does not exist any efficient algorithm which can compute k uh, in, a, in a very efficient way. So, that way if you ask any person to compute such k where x and y are given then uh, the best way to solve this kind of puzzle is by applying random methodology. So, you have to try for different values of k and you have to find out whether the hash of uh, x appended k becomes equals to y. So, these are the three important properties of uh, a cryptographic hash function. So, we look into these three properties little detail. So, as I have mentioned that the collision free property says that these hash functions are one way. So, given some value of x it is computationally easy to find the h x value of h x, but given a h x you cannot have any computationally efficient way to find out uh, the original message. So, from message to digest you can find out uh, it using an efficient mechanism, but from digest to message there is no such efficient way to find it out. Uh, so, that particular property we call it uh, as collision free and one interesting point here to note is that uh, we have we have mentioned that such kind of things like uh, it is it is difficult to find uh, the values of x and y such that x not equal to y however h x equal to h y. So, that means there is a kind of collision in the hash and as we have discussed earlier that this kind of collision can always occur uh, in a hash function because in a hash function typically what we are doing that uh, you have a large message pool which is the given m and from that large message pool you have the corresponding digest and the digest has some fixed size. Say for the digest has some 128 bit of length. Now, whenever you are mapping a large population to a corresponding small population it is always like that there would be two point here where that they will be mapped to the same point in HM. So, this can always be there uh, the case, but uh, uh, it is it is very unlikely that an attacker he will be able to find out two such x 1 and x 2 where h of x 1 becomes h of x 2. So, this is kind of difficult to find in case of a cryptographic hash function. So, what I mentioned here that uh, this kind of uh, property where x is not equal to y, but h of uh, x is equal to h of y. This is difficult to find, but as I have mentioned it is not impossible to find out such kind of computation. And the best way of doing this kind of thing is to try randomly choose an input and to find out whether a collision occur in case of a hash function. But remember that there is no such efficient algorithm exist which can find out a collision in a uh, cryptographic hash function. So, uh, let us see that how do we guarantee this kind of collision free proper property and as I have mentioned uh, again I am uh, repeating the same point that uh, 
this kind of collision is difficult to find in case of a hash function. Now, for certain hash function, it depends on the design of the hash function. For certain hash function, it may be easy to find out such kind of collision, but for certain other hash function, it may be difficult to find out. And with the term cryptographic hash function, we are talking about the hash function where such kind of collision is difficult to find. Now, uh, let us look this property from a probabilistic way that uh, we need can find out that given some fixed length of the population of the possible message digest, what is the probability that you will be able to find out two such messages where they will be mapped to the same digest. So, this kind of uh, uh, problem we can solve using the concept of birthday paradox. So, the birthday paradox says that find the probability that in a set of n randomly chosen people, some of them will have the exactly same birthday. Now, in this birthday paradox, you see that uh, if you have 366 number of uh, uh, people in the population, if you consider a leap year, then there is certainly a collision. Why? Because you know that in a year which is uh, not a leap year, you have a total of 365 days and out of these 365 days, you can have 365 possible birthdays and if you have 366 people in the population, then it is guaranteed by the PG and Hull principle that two of them will have the exactly same birthday. So, that way uh, whenever the population reaches to 366 if it is not a leap year or equal to 367 if it is a leap year, uh, then it is uh, guaranteed or with probability 1 you will be able to say that there is a collision. But interestingly, uh, if you if you just try to see that what will happen uh, in case of uh, less number of people compared to 366 uh, for a leap year or 367 uh, uh, 367 for a leap year or 366 for not a leap year that uh, around 0 0.999 probability that means 99.9% .9 probability is reached with just 70 percent uh, 70 people. On the other hand you can get 0 0.5 probability with uh, only 23 people. That way you will see that if you have some sufficiently random pickup of small number of persons from the population with high probability you will be able to say that the two persons will have same birthday. Now, this kind of property also applies in the concept of uh, a cryptographic uh, hash function to find out a hash collision. So, this birthday paradox it gives a upper bound on the collision resistance. So, if a hash function produces n bits of output, then we can say that an attacker, if it, if that attacker can compute 2 to the power n by 2 hash operations on a randomly input, randomly chosen input to find out that whether to match, uh, whether there is a hash collision, that means whether there are two matching outputs, uh, it can, it can find it out with a probability greater than 0 0.98. That means, with 98 percent uh, surety, the attacker will be able to say that uh, or attacker will be able to find out that there exist two messages which maps to the same message digest and it, that attacker need to find out only 2 to the power n by 2 number of possible hash operations. Now, the question is that for a 256 bit output, uh, the attacker need to compute 2 to the power 128 such hash operation. So, we need to see whether this is feasible or not. Now, if you look into a small mathematics like uh, if every hash computation takes 1 millisecond, uh, then uh, you will require 2 to the power 128 millisecond to compute 2 to the power 128 numbers of hash operations and which is approximately equal to uh, 10 to the power 28 years. So, it will take a significant amount of time to find out two messages which will map to the message digest. Now, with this concept we can say that although it is not possible uh, or, or, or although it is possible to find out a collision in a cryptographic hash function, but it is very difficult to find out two messages which will map to the same message digest uh, for, for, for a cryptographic hash function. Uh, so, uh, that was the first property of uh, this uh, collision free. Then, uh, with this collision free property, we can say that if 
two hashes or two message digest are similar. So, if two message digest are similar, then, then we can safely assume that the corresponding messages are also similar by considering that uh, it is it is very difficult to find out two messages which will map to the same digest. Now, with this particular property, uh, we can claim that uh, if you want to transfer some message, then if you want to check the validity of that message, you just need to remember the hash value, not the entire message. So, that way we call uh, this, this particular hash value of a message as the message digest that you do not need to remember the entire message to check whether two messages are similar or not. You can just compute the corresponding hash functions, remember the message digest and by comparing the two message digest, if the message digest becomes similar, then with high probability you will be able to say that the corresponding messages are also similar. So, this particular computation is efficient because uh, the digest of the the size of the digest is significantly less compared to the size of the message, size of the original message. So, you do, you do not need to do uh, a comparison over large number of bits. You can just make a comparison over the message digest which are of finite bit size. So, of, of a 256 bit message digest, you just need to do a 256 uh, bit wise comparison to find out whether two message are uh, same or not. So, uh, the second properties of uh, second important property of a cryptographic hash function is the information hiding property. So, as you have mentioned earlier that um, these hash functions are one way function that means, uh, it is computationally difficult to find out uh, the original message if the message digest is given to you. Uh, and it also uh, uh, and it is difficult and the difficulty depends on the size of the message digest. So, if I give you a 2 bit message digest, it may be easier to find out what is the original message, but if I give you a 256 bit message digest, it becomes very difficult for you to guess what is the original message. So, this particular one way property of a hash function, it uh, helps hiding the message, hiding the message in the sense like you can you can hide the original message behind the message digest. And uh, uh, the advantage is that with the message digest, you can make a comparison where, whether two messages are similar or not. Now, this kind of hiding, it helps to commit a value and check it later. It is like that you can, you can compute the message digest compare, uh, corresponds to a message, store the message digest along with the message and next time you got another message, you want to compare that message with the original message. So, you compute the message digest and then check whether two message digest are same. You do not need to check the original messages with each other. This uh, gives an interesting application in the direction of message commitment. So, uh, in this particular application, Alice wants to send some information to Jane via Bob. So, it is like that now Alice is sending this information to Bob and whenever Alice is sending this information to Bob, what Alice is doing that Alice is sending the message along with that Alice is sending one information which we call the public key of Alice. Now, it is globally known that this public identity uh, Alice can only have this public identity k. So, if you if you have the, this information k, you can safely assume that this information k is known to Alice only or that belongs to Alice only. Now, Alice sends this information along with m and along with that it sends a hash value. So, this hash value combines the original message and the secret information or, or the information that Alice has and make a hash of that. Now, whenever you are sending this information via Bob, if Bob makes any changes in the message, Bob has to also compute the corresponding things, corresponding hash. Now, this particular thing Bob cannot compute because this information is known to Alice only. So, the details of these things we will look into later, but the idea is that this uh, Jane, it, he can verify whether this intermediate person has made any changes in the message or not by computing the hash value from these two parameter and then checking the hash value with the hash value that was transferred by uh, Alice originally. 
So, if Bob makes any changes in, um, in, in the value of uh, uh, m, so that will also make a change in uh, h of m k. So, it will, it will uh, get verified during the uh, commitment of, commitment of uh, this kind of messages. Now, the third property of uh, a cryptographic hash function is puzzle friendly property. So, this puzzle friendly property uh, we have mentioned earlier in case of a puzzle friendly property, it says that uh, you have been given, you have been given uh, m and z and m and z is given to you and you need to find out the value of k such that z becomes equal to the hash of m and k appended to each other. Now, as we have mentioned earlier that finding out such k is extremely difficult in case of a cryptographic hash function and the best way to solve this puzzle is to randomly try with different values of k and check that whether the hash function results the value of z or not. So, this corresponds to the puzzle free property. So, the puzzle free property implies that uh, you need to make a random searching of the parameter k to find out. Uh, the hash value of m and k appended together and, uh, and the hash value of m and k which becomes equal to z. So, this puzzle friendly property uh, helps us uh, uh, significantly in the construction of a blockchain architecture. So, let us see how it uh, helps us in, um, in uh, solving the blockchain. So, in case of a blockchain, we use a special type of hash function called uh, SHA 256 hash function. So, this SHA 256 hash function it is used during the Bitcoin mining phase uh, to construct the uh, blockchain behind Bitcoin. So, SHA corresponds to the secure hash algorithm which generates a 256 bit message digest. So, the output uh, generated by uh, this SHA 256 hash algorithm is a 256 uh, bit message digest. So, this uh, hash function it is a part of SHA 2 group of hash functions which is which are a set of cryptographic hash function which are designed by United States National Security Agency. So, it belongs to different uh, kinds of hash function like SHA 128, SHA 256, SHA 512. So, out of that that SHA 256 is used uh, during the Bitcoin mining procedure. So, uh, let us uh, look briefly about this SHA 256 um, algorithm, uh, the hash algorithm. So, it uses a preprocessing mechanism. In this preprocessing mechanism, the first task is you need to pad the message such that the total ma message size becomes multiple of 512 bits. So, uh, it, may, it may happen that the total message size is less than uh, an integer multiple of 512 bits. If it is in less than an integer uh, multiple of 512 bits, then you have to add certain pad, padding bits with that and uh, the padding bits which are added uh, is uh, first you have to append a bit 1 at the end of your message. After appending a bit 1 at the end of your message, you have to append k number of 0 bits where this value of L, L is the value of your original message length. So, your original message was uh, L bit and our objective is to ensure that uh, L mod 512 becomes equal to 0 and there you first pad a 1 bit. After that you pad uh, k another 0 bits such that this L plus 1 plus k becomes equivalent to 448 mod 512. Now, whenever you are uh, getting such k number of bits which are being appended, the total message size becomes integer multiple of 448. So, you have to append 64 more bits. So, this uh, 64 bit block uh, which, uh, uh, which is appended at the end to make it an integer multiple of 512, it is the binary equivalent of this value L. Uh, so, if you convert the value L to binary, uh, whatever uh, number of uh, bits you get in a 64 bit re representation that is appended at the end and after appending that at the end you get a total length block which is uh, an integer multiple of 512. Now, once you have this total length integer multiple of 512 by adding up this extra padding bits, uh, 
uh, you parse this message into n number of 512 bits block. Now, the total message length has become integer multiple of 512 uh, bits. So, you can divide the message into multiple chunks like m1, m2 up to mn such that each such message block is 512 bit long. After that, each of this 512 bit message they are further divided into 32 bit sub blocks m0 i, m1 i to m 15 i. So, after doing this preprocessing means after dividing this entire message into multiple blocks, the next task, the next task is to start with a fixed initial hash value of 80. So, you start with a hash value of 10, after starting with a hash value of 10, you iteratively process each block one after another. So, you sequentially compute this h i which will be h of i minus 1 plus a compression function. So, this is a compression function, we are not going to the details of how this compression function looks like. If you are interested, you can uh, look the details of this compression function. So, this compression function is a sequence of shifting, uh, bit shifting and bit appending operations. So, you apply this comp compression function over the previous hash function that you have obtained and uh, you uh, with, with the message block that you had and by after applying the compression function you app, add it up with. Uh, so, this add is the bitwise uh, add operation, uh, add it up with the uh, original uh, hash value at the i plus 1 uh, iteration and that way you do the computation and the, at the end whatever you will get that will give you the final hash value. So, an example is something like this. So, you have a 256 initialization vector. So, this 256 is initialization vector was your initial hash value or 80. Now, this 256 initial vector is given as a input to the compression function and the first block is given to input. Then the compression function produces the output. With this output, you are then taking uh, the input of the next block applying it the compression function and then doing the addition with the previous hash value sending it out and after that finally, the hash value that you will get from here that will be equal to your message digest. Now, initially you have taken a 256 bit initial vector and while doing this compression function, the compression function again generates a 256 bit output and whenever these things are getting added sequentially, finally you will get the message digest which is 256 bit long. So, this is the SHA 256 algorithm. Now, uh, we come to the concept of hash pointer which we uh, use in the blockchain con uh, concept. So, a cryptographic hash pointer, it is a pointer to a location where we store the original message or the information along with the hash of that information. So, with this particular hash pointer, you can retrieve the information and you can make a sanity check that whatever message that has been stored in the location if the hash value matches, matches with the message digest, then this particular message digest actually points to the original message. So, this is an example of a hash pointer. So, in this hash pointer, you have uh, the original data uh, uh, that was there and the hash value of the data, it is pointing to uh, the original data block. Now, uh, with this concept of hash pointer, you can detect tampering. So, we use this kind of data structure uh, in blockchain construction, what we call as the hash chain. So, in this hash chain architecture, uh, this uh, particular hash value, it points to the previous data block. So, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, hash value of uh, this di, the data block along with the previous hash value that is getting hashed and the original hash value is appended to the data block of uh, data block of uh, i plus 1 uh, data block. So, that way if you are making any change in this data block, then you need to make a change at this particular hash value and if you are making this changes this particular hash value, then this particular hash value will also get changed and that way if you want to make change in one of the particular data block 
it will have a kind of cascading effect that all subsequent hash values need to be changed. So, this particular data structure we call it as a hash chain and uh, based on this hash pointer we have another nice data structure which is called the Merkle tree uh, that we have looked earlier. So, in case of Merkle tree the root has, has two pointers the left pointer points to the level 1 hash the right pointer point to the right hash and uh, uh, just the nodes immediately before the leaf node this um, uh, points to individual hash of individual transaction. So, that way if you make any changes in one of the transaction it gets reflected in the entire path and that way you will be uh, the entire structure is tamper proof that means if you make any change in one transaction you need to make change uh, in all the transactions along the path. Now, uh, as I have mentioned that uh, uh, this uh, blockchain architecture it relies on this uh, kind of um, uh, hash properties. So, here uh, using these hash pointers we are pointing the previous hash this is pointing the hash value of the previous block and uh, here we keep this information inside the block these things we have discussed earlier just a kind of repetition you have a Merkle root. So, this Merkle root uh, is the root of the Merkle tree that is constructed over the set of transactions and then you have a nonce value the miner needs to find out this nonce value uh, to compute the uh, hash of this block. So, every block will also contain the previous hash. So, that way if you want to make any changes in any of the transaction that will get make a change in the Merkle root and if you make a change in the Merkle root this block hash will get change. If this block has get change you have to make a change in the hash value here and that way you will have a cascading effect and if you make any changes in any of the blocks that you need to make changes in all the blocks in the blockchain. So, uh, this gives an uh, idea about uh, how we apply this concept of uh, hash cryptographic hash function to de derive the entire data structure corresponds to a blockchain and uh, how we make the blockchain tamper free by applying this concept of uh, repetitive hash pointers. Uh, in, the, in the next lecture we will look into another cryptographic uh, formulation called digital signature which further helps securing uh, the blockchain architecture. So, see you, uh, see you all uh, during the next class. Thank you.